Okay, as promised, let's talk about how the temperature affects the rate of a reaction. So here's a kind of complicated looking graph. Um, first of all, we're going to look at sort of qualitatively what happens when we increase the temperature, and then we'll throw some math into that, which ought to freak you out a little bit. So on the y-axis here, we have the number of molecules with a certain amount of energy, okay? And this orangey line, or brown line, is at some temperature T, okay? If I increase the temperature, the molecules have more energy. So this green part shifts over a little bit, okay? So one thing it tells us is that when we increase the temperature, the molecules have more energy, but we knew that. So now I'm going to look at these graphs, and on this graph, there's a barrier right here you see right down this line where it says EA. Anything above here, we would say, has enough energy or energy greater than the activation energy to react. Okay? So collisions that happen between particles over to the right of this line are called effective collisions. When they collide, they're likely to form products. At this lower temperature, we have this whole bit right here. All of these molecules would have enough energy that when they collide they would for probably form products. Okay, But at this higher temperature you'll see there's there's more of them. Okay, So all it tells us that is that when we increase the temperature okay, more particles have energy greater than the activation energy and can produce, par can produce products. Okay, So more particles have energy greater than the activation energy, okay, so we'll end up with more what we've been calling effective collisions, collisions between particles that are likely to produce uh, products. Okay, so this graph tells us two things, higher temperature, more energy, and higher temperature, more particles have energy greater than the necessary activation energy, so you get more effective collisions. So that's the qualitative part of it. So here is the relationship between the rate law constant and the temperature. And you're probably like, holy crap, has she lost her mind? What is that? Well, yeah, I haven't completely lost my mind, but don't worry, I'm going to make this easier in a second. But first I'm going to make it harder. In order to make this reaction useful. I'm going to start by taking the natural log of both sides. Okay, you don't have to know how to do this. But I end up with the L and a K, and this whole mess turns into this. Okay, yeah, so why did I do this? Well, I did it because now Y equals MX plus B. Okay, L and a K is our Y. 1 over temperature, okay, 1 over the temperature is our x. So what's our slope equal to? Our slope equals minus Ea over R. Okay, Ea is our activation energy, okay, and that has to be in joules per mole. And R is actually our gas law constant. Unfortunately, when we have equations that have energy in them, the R that we have to use is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, you have to use 8.31 in here. Um, and this is our y-intercept. Okay, so if we were to graph this, which I think I did, hey, there it is. So if we were to graph this, L and a K versus 1 over temperature, we would get a line with a negative slope, and that slope would be minus Ea over R. Okay? Slope equals minus Ea over R. Well, that means that we can graph this sort of data and calculate the activation energy. Okay? Well, as it's written, this is not a very useful equation, neither in this form nor in this form. Um, because we have something in here called a frequency factor that is a random constant that changes for every single reaction 
that happens. So it, it's not a helpful thing. So again, I'll show you some math, but you don't really have to reproduce it. Okay. I, I took the ln of both sides twice, and then I took these two equations and subtracted them from each other. So the ln of k2 minus ln of k1, and then I subtracted these. And long story short, this is the useful equation that we get, okay, that we'll refer to as the Arrhenius equation. Okay. It's the Arrhenius equation in either format, this one or from the page before. But like the gas laws, this allows us to have two different temperatures and find two different um, rate law constants. So a couple things that you're going to goof up on. Make sure that um, the activation energy is in joules and not kilojoules. And make sure your temperature is in Kelvin. Okay. Other than that, the math is pretty straightforward. I'll help you with it if you have any trouble. Um, and that's it. I guess that's the whole video. So we'll practice using this equation, and if you run into any trouble with the math, I'll help you out. Uh, one last trick is don't forget the ln of k2 over k1. You can make that the ln of k2 minus the ln of k1. That's a useful math trick that might help you out here. All right, so when you start working with that, you'll let me know how it goes.